Okay. Awesome. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to Saffron SACAP's Home Office Engagement Team co collaboration. Um, it's amazing to be back um, after last month we were unable to schedule um, the Zoom um, in respect of um, the Duke of Edinburgh, rest in peace, may he so rest in peace. And um, thank you to the Home Office who, um, you know, kindly um, decided to, uh, from obvious reason, for obvious reasons, um, we didn't come on um, in order to pay our respects to, to, to the Duke and, and the Royal family. So we are here once again. Uh, my name is Gizo Giacco. And I am the director for programs for Saffron SACAP. Um, nice to have you all on. I will ask for those of you that do come on in case we don't get to mute you, please come in and mute yourselves so that when the conversations are being had, there will not be any interruptions. Um, just before we continue, I would like to do um, a few house rules. Um, as, as always with Saffron Zooms, we do ask that you, know, you feel free to share your opinions but we do ask that you know there is a lot of respect um, in the sharing of your opinions, and um, we may all not agree on, on on everything. But we do ask that you, whatever deliberations that we have, that they maintain a sense of decorum and respect um, to everybody on the forum. Um, I'm sure we have our Facebook family who will be um, watching from Facebook, so we want to welcome you to the forum as well today. Um, Yemi will be on board to take all your questions um, and any statements. Please feel free to type in Facebook um, and we will also take some questions on the chat. There will be um, a few things that obviously will come up today, um, but we would kindly ask that you stick to what I'm about to say to you today. We will not be discussing anything that is already on the website. And the reason being, because you can go to the website and you can read it yourselves, okay? And what we would ask is, if there is anything you've read on the website that is confusing, you probably need clarification because you've already gone to the website, that is different. I'm sure the team will be happy to clarify, but we will not be going over, or rather they will not be going over what is already on the website. So, so please, please bear that in mind. We are on from 12 to three, we're not on the whole day. So we would like to keep everything streamlined. Um, secondly, we will not be responding to any question statements regarding the Glasgow incident, okay? Um, so please do not come on and ask questions because you will be referred, um, we'll, you, we will refer you on, the team will refer you on because it's not the right platform to, to host that, that discussion. Um, and we will be sharing links where we will be signposting you as, as the Zoom goes along, all right? So um, without much ado, I want to, first of all, introduce um, my, Director um, Yemi, I believe you'd like to unmute and introduce yourself, please. Okay. Good morning, everyone. This is Yemi Ebulu and Terry. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, I, I don't know. It's good morning here. It might be good afternoon or good evening somewhere else, but wherever you are, please stay with us. Um, throw us your questions. I will be hosting everyone on Facebook. Our usual family or welcome, new guests, very much welcome. And um, be constructive, please. Um, come with questions that um, we can support you with, as opposed to sending you back to the um, website, Home Office website. So please do your homework and um, let's see how we can help and support and signpost you to the right places. Thank you. Thanks, Giz. Thank you. And just before I hand over to the team, for those of you who possibly this is your first time ever of coming onto this Zoom, um, this Zoom was obviously created as a result of um, a gentleman. Um, we, we first of all, we don't name names here, so I won't be calling any names. We will give scenarios. We will give factual information about the um, situations that have happened in the UK are happening and do happen. But what we ask is you don't release any names because we don't want names on here. It's a confidential um, arena and you are live on Facebook. 
um, and, and you can be streamed on other social media platforms. So please, 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 no names. So yes, so the basis of this Zoom was um, a gentleman was seen in the UK um, and there was some domestic abuse obviously going on and it was related to um, his immigration status. Um, so there was some, some level of domestic servitude going on and we reached out to the team and they were amazing um, in supporting Saffron to, to enable this gentleman and um, happily he, he has got his documentation. He's, he's, he's been given his stay in the United Kingdom as a result of doing the right thing, speaking to the right people, taking the right advice. And that is basically what this forum is all about. So without much ado, I am going to hand over to Yemisi Jenkins, MDE, who has brought her team today. Um, Yemisi, good afternoon. If you'd like to unmute and the floor is yours. Is good afternoon, Yemi. Good afternoon to the whole team, um, Saffron team. Thank you um, for putting this together. Thank you for hosting us. Um, and good afternoon to my colleagues as well. So um, as always, I will introduce myself. My colleagues too will introduce themselves briefly and then we'll go through the motions and then we'll have time for questions and answer. Please, 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 can I ask that you don't ask um, personal questions because it's uh, it's actually not fair on you bearing your business to the whole world <laughs> because we're on Facebook and I think we're on YouTube as well. So it's really not fair on you to be put in that um, situation. You can um, give a scenario and we'll try and address it. And then once we're done with the presentation and Q&A, general Q&A, we normally have um, sessions where people would have submitted um, their names to Saffron for one-to-one. -one. So if you have um, questions where it's you require a one-to-one -one response, um, I'm sure Saffron will um, tell you how to go about that. And then what then happens is we everybody exits and then we have a private platform, which means it's just myself and my colleagues and Saffron and people are let in one by one to ask their questions. And please, yes, we will have one to one, but a maximum of you know five, 10 minutes, because as you would understand the maximum of five minutes, I can see Giza's face maximum of five minutes and if we need to proceed further we would ask you you know if you're comfortable come through um saffron or um come directly to us whichever one makes you comfortable so my name is yemc jenkins i am the national community engagement lead for nigeria in um, immigration enforcement and uh, my role is actually to engage with the community not only nigerian community i i, I, I say um i add because, but uh, because the tag Nigeria is there because Nigeria, unfortunately, is in the top ten nationalities uh, that we we um, are struggling to engage with. Um, so, what I'm saying literally is, if you are from any African country or the Caribbean, even if you are outside those countries, and um, you need you have questions or concerns please feel free to drop me an email or to drop um, Saffron an email and that email will get to me. So um, why are we here today? We're here today to build a relationship. We're here to, today to restore trust. We're here today to actually demystify a lot of things that people um, say about home office and um, immigration enforcement. Yes, as a name, um, as our name, immigration enforcement, we will enforce the law. That is what we're paid to do. But what we're saying is that is not the only thing we do. We do not shy away. We're not um, shy from what we do. That is what we're paid to do. That is what we have signed up to do. But what we're saying is that we do it with dignity and respect, engaging you properly. That is the difference. And also to let you know that there are other support that we provide um, a lot of people, when I say to them that as immigration enforcement, we provide support to vulnerable people, they're like, really? Now, we've got um, our, um, one, of, one of our um, vulnerability leads and champions with us today, um, Janet. So, Janet, I think naturally I'll just default to you to say, please um, introduce yourself quickly and then we'll go um, 
around the house um, to just do a brief introduction of names and what people do, responsibilities, so that um, it gives you an idea that we're really, really interested in engaging with the community. Thank you. Um, Janet, you do you need to unmute her? I can see Janet, but she's muted. Okay, hold on. Let me check. No, I thought she was unmuted. Hold on a second. Janet. Janet, do you want to? Okay, we're waiting for Janet. Um, Don? Okay, Janet is on now. Yeah, Janet. Hello, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you now. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for inviting myself and my colleagues. Um, so my name is Janet Griffiths. Um, I work for Immigration Enforcement, and I'm one of the vulnerability leads. So my role within that is to support my colleagues, and obviously there's some with us today, in um, making sure that we put people at the forefront of everything we do. So irrespective of your immigration history, if we identify um, a vulnerability, we try and work with, with people, with organisations, with other government departments to, to um, deal with that vulnerability. It could be domestic violence, it could be forced marriage, um, it could be anything. So we would look to um, mitigate that vulnerability before before we do anything about anybody's immigration status. And that includes if somebody's a victim of crime. And my particular expertise is modern slavery. So I'm the lead for modern slavery for I, for immigration enforcement. So I do training for how to, how to look after people, how to safeguard them, uh, working with Dawn about how to make a proper referral to the organizations that look at whether somebody's um, a victim or not. So thank you. Thank you, um, Janet. I think um, we just go naturally um, to um, Don. We need to unmute Don. Unmute. Oh, yeah. Good. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so my name's Dawn. I'm an immigration officer. So, um, I'm probably one of the first people that you will actually see if you're illegally in the UK or if you have any um, contact with local authorities or with the police. So my job is to help people. I think there's a massive myth in the community that, you know, we just go out, arrest, detain, remove people. That's not all that we do. And I'm not going to stand here today and apologise for the job that I do because I like my job. I like that I'm able to assist people. Um, and I hope that I would assist people with a bit of humility and humanity and you no know, please and thank you i was i was taught with good manners to say please and thank you and I, and I would hope that i would come across that in my engagement with you but not everybody we engage with wants to engage with us so sometimes you know please and thank you isn't necessarily enough and sometimes i have to end up being a bit of a parent like i am on my own children and you know i hope you know with with a bit of hope everyone has hope that people will you know follow the rules and you know go about the everyday business but I'm part of the community the same as you and my job is to enforce the law but I help people as well so as part of my job I will go out and I will look for people who have been trafficked to the UK look for people who are have entered into sham marriage and they've been you know duped into it by certain people who are using them for their own their own means to stay in the UK to help people who've been exploited by employers you know they're working illegally in the UK but they're not paid the map the, the national minimum wage and they're not covered by health and safety legislation you know um to help protect people who um, may be subject to harm you know because there's a lot of people um who and we know this as, as members of the community and as members of law enforcement that may go underneath the radar that might be criminals in their own countries that we're not aware of and, and they could be you know have committed some horrendous crimes in their country of origin but we can help victims, but we can only help people who wish to communicate with us. And our job today is to engage with, with the people in our communities. And as I said before, we are part of the community. We do appreciate that speaking to ourselves can be difficult and it might mean having a difficult conversation with us. But we're prepared for that. That's why we're on, the, on this conversation with you today. And safeguarding is paramount in every interaction that we take with individuals. So if we think somebody is at risk, whether it's by on a base violence, forced marriage, 
FGM, then we will flag that up with the authorities and we work with the authorities to try and assist that person to get the support that we need because we are victim focused and that's part of everything that we do today. So I'm hoping for me today, I'm hoping that somebody speaks to us so we can try and help. Um, and that's what it's all about today. So I'm hoping that that's what you do. So thank you. Thank you, um, Dawn. Uh, Mercy? Can we unmute Mercy, please? You've already met me before. Um, <laughs> I'm an immigration officer. I usually cover the North London area. I have uh, been working within the community for about 18 years now. Um, I usually uh, deal with the North London Black Churches, and I've given a lot of uh, presentations um, around North London. Um, I cover Enfield, Haringey, Wharton Forest, uh, Redbridge. I'm also the spot for marriages. So if you register to get married around the North London area, uh, your case is likely to come to me before it arrives um, uh, at the desk of the person who will be interviewing you. Um, I also uh, sit at um, Vulnerability Steering Committee in uh, Enfield Council. So um, I deal with modern slavery and other issues. I also work in the Albanian community, of course, engaging with the community. Um, I'm here today, uh, the usual, take some questions and also talk a little bit, just a few points about the new marriage changes coming from the 1st of July with regards to EU nationals and um, what they need to do if they want to marry in the UK. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mercy. Um, Amanda? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Amanda Cahill and I work closely with Dawn. Um, I'm an immigration officer. And again, like Dawn said, you know, um, we have a role, we have a job to do, um, but it doesn't mean that we can't um, be empathetic. We can't um, support people um, when it comes to uh, vulnerabilities and harm within the community. And again, you know, uh, forefront of you know myself and that is uh you know a person is a person before any immigration status so you know um if you've got difficulties or problems you know please do open up and ask for help from the home office you know um there are processes there that can help you um when it comes to um you know getting status in the uk or for any other reason the wider knowledge and of the gov.uk website so um, i am just like to say hello for the first time because this is my first time on this um group chat thank you amanda um last but not the least catherine is playing up we're losing you a bit yeah missy <laughs> read oh. Oh, why is this happening? It's come back now. Oh, oh okay. Catherine, we know we can't see your video, but um, can you unmute Catherine, please? Yes, let me, let me find her and unmute her. Uh, just bear with me. Close that. Right, Catherine, there we go. Unmute that. She's unmuted now. Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh, excellent. So my name is Catherine and I'm one of the uh, chief immigration officers here in the Wales and Southwest ICE team. Um, so I would echo what Dawn and Amanda have both said about uh, my role is very similar. I am part of, of an arrest team, but actually, first and foremost, um, it's important and it's a real consideration for how we treat people like I don't, let arresting is a last resort for us. Um, we treat people that we come across with dignity and respect. Um, and I'm here today really because part of my role and a key part is to engage with communities. And I'm really interested to just hear what the views are and um, what's on people's minds. And, and I just like to sort of open a conversation really with people. Um, and that's that's really why I'm here today. Fantastic. I hope, I hope that you Thank want to speak to me. Thank you very much, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Catherine and Amanda, this is their first time. Um, yeah. So, welcome, everybody. So, um, let's go straight into it. It's 
um, stuff that we want. So I will just touch on issues, uh, and I think we have our let's talk about because that impacts your even. Right, repeat. Am I dragging again? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Just repeat it. It was going a bit funny, but you go ahead, and I think you're clear. Okay. All right. I, I just said that um, I will talk about COVID. There's a video that we will quickly share to, just to encourage you. And as we all know, irrespective of your immigration status, COVID is affecting and impacting on everybody and businesses. So um, do we have the video to play? Yes, let's yes, see. Can you share it, Yemi, or? Yes, we'll do. OK, we'll thank do. you. audio okay there's no volume okay sound no sound hold on let me let her know no sound okay you know with that you know what i part on the screen i'm so sorry oh. hello my name is benga I'm the president of Nigeria and GPs UK. We've got an important message to share with you about the COVID-19 vaccine. I've had my COVID-19 vaccine and I want to encourage you all to do so when the opportunity arises. Please listen, thank you. The past year has been extremely challenging and difficult for so many people. Some of us have lost loved ones, colleagues, relatives and friends to this horrible COVID-19 virus. It is also evident that long-standing systemic social and health inequalities places people from the black and ethnic minority groups at a higher risk of dying from the COVID-19 virus. And this is especially true for key workers and frontline healthcare workers. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. The good news is that after a lot of hard work and extensive research, scientists have developed very effective vaccines against this virus to protect us all. It's okay to ask questions about the vaccine, but please ensure that you get your answers from verified and reputable sources. Please do not say no when you are invited for the COVID-19 vaccine. We will pull through this, but we all need to work together and support each other in this fight against COVID-19. My name is Dr. Omoni Mohi. I'm a Nigerian GP in the UK, and I've had my COVID-19 vaccine. Hi, my name is Dr. Onye Okonkwo. I'm a Nigerian GP in the UK, and I've had my COVID vaccine. Hi, my name is Dr. Harris Nafian. I'm a Nigerian GP in the UK, and I've had my COVID vaccine. My name is Dr. Nwogogu. I'm a Nigerian GP, and I've had the COVID vaccine. I'm Dr. Henry Akitane, a Nigerian GP working in the UK, and I've had my COVID vaccine. My name is Taya Ariba. I'm a Nigerian GP in the UK, and I've had my COVID vaccine. I am Dr. Wilson Oriena. I'm a Nigerian GP, and I've had the COVID vaccine. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so That's me done. Yeah. When's the next one? Well, 11 weeks' time, so we'll book you in. Yeah. We'll give you an appointment right now. I'll go get the patient leaflet and the card and everything. Oh, okay, then. So right. just hang on to her uh, while she does that for you. I am Dr. Ikenna Ezama. I'm a Nigerian GP in the UK, and I've had my COVID vaccine. I'm Dr. Adebola Adisa, a Nigerian GP in the UK. I have had my COVID vaccine. I'm Dr. Sylvia Anake. I'm a Nigerian GP in the UK, and this is just to let you know, go get your COVID vaccine. I've had mine. Hello, I am Dr. Ola Omotosha. I'm a Nigerian GP working in the UK and I've had my COVID vaccine. Hello, I'm Dr. Aida Logan. 
I'm a Nigerian GP in Manchester and I've had my COVID vaccine. Hi, I'm Dr. Adeke Miadiemi. I'm a GP working in the United Kingdom, originally from Nigeria. I've had my first COVID vaccine. Hi, my name is Dr. Iside Laleye. I'm a Nigerian GP and I've had my COVID-19 vaccine. Hi, I'm Margaret Ikpo and I'm a Nigerian GP in the UK and I've had my COVID vaccine. My name is Dr. Sandra Ezebo. I am a Nigerian GP and I've also had the COVID-19 vaccination just right here. Just like the rest of my colleagues, we strongly believe that the benefits of you taking the COVID-19 vaccination outweighs any risk of developing side effects. As we know, COVID has led to so many deaths around the world. And even for those that have survived COVID, some people have ended up developing long-term symptoms or complications from the virus, which is affecting their quality of life. The COVID-19 vaccination was approved by MHRA in the UK, which is the governing body that ensures that the vaccine is safe and effective. As we know, millions of people have had the vaccine around the world. And the common side effects reported are a bit of sore arm or tenderness around the site of the injection. Some people complained of muscle ache, a bit of fever, tiredness and headache. But a lot of those symptoms went away even within seven days. Just take some paracetamol. What we're trying to say to you today is, rather than listen to conspiracy theories, please ensure you're making a safe decision, not just for you, but for your loved ones as well. Say yes to the vaccination, to COVID vaccination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was cool. And I, and I hope that um, people find that useful. Um, there's also a link um, that we've sent um, to Saffron, um, just to reassure you that irrespective of your equation status, please, 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 if you're called upon, go and take your vaccine. Nobody should be asking you to your immigration status. If they do, please, um, let Saffron know just the details for um, immigration status, okay? And then Saffron will pass that to us. Um, maybe I should repeat that. If you go um, to get your COVID vaccine, if you don't have papers, Nobody should be asking you for your immigration status. They will ask you for um, what you declare yourself as in terms of your essay, and that is for statistics. That is for the purpose of gathering statistics to make sure that everyone is covered. And they would ask for your name. That is all. And maybe a date of birth. But in terms of your immigration status, no one will be asking you for that. And there are some areas, because some people have said, oh, um, they, they're not registered with GPs. There are centers that you can actually walk into to get your COVID vaccine. So please we need to look after, after ourselves and we need to look after the community as a whole. Um, I'm going to ask Mercy to come on now to tell us about the changes in rules regarding marriages. Mercy, the floor is yours. We need to unmute Mercy. Okay, she muted. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Mercy. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, th these new changes uh, co uh, commences on the 1st of July, 2021. Um, it looks like the main ones are one, two, three, five, five main ones. Um, the registry offices, um, the designated registry offices where you go in to give notice to get married, will now from 1st of July require both parties to give notice together within a district where at least one of them lives. So before people could register to get married separately but now they have to go together and it has to be um a district where one of them lives so if you live in manchester you can't register to get married in Haringey like before 
So one of one of the two parties have to reside in that district. Uh, this amendment does not affect um, registrar offices in Scotland and Northern Ireland. So it doesn't include Scotland and Northern Ireland. So uh, and the next one is um, any couple um, includes an EA that includes an EA national except Irish citizens. <clears throat> or somebody with permission to live here, or a pending application for permission to live here under the EU settlement scheme. Uh, wishing to marry in the Anglican church will be required to complete um, civil preliminaries by giving notice at a designated registry offices before their marriage. I will just explain that. If you are wishing to get married and you fall within um, the group where we need to investigate you, such as somebody with limited leave, not permanent leave, limited leave, uh, if you're also an EU national and you want to get married in the Anglican church, you still need to register at a registry office before you can uh, get permission to get married. So th that point is very important. Even though you are getting married in the Anglican church, you still have to go to a registry um, office to complete certain forms and um, get permission to get married. Also, those who have uh, put an application in for the EU scheme um, and is still outstanding, uh, will be given a certificate of application um, to use to go and uh, register to get married. So if you put an application in and it's still pending or outstanding, you will be given a certificate of application, which you will then use for the registration. Um, that that will be done on online to uh, the registry. The registrars know what to do anyway, but you will be given a certain certificate to take with you. Uh, also, EEA nationals will no longer be able to use their national ID card as evidence. Uh, before an EEA national could use their ID card as evidence to get married. When you're getting married in the UK, you're going to register to get married, give notice you do have to take an ID with you, and it's usually a passport for British nationals. EU nationals um, are allowed to take their ID card, but from the 1st of July, that is not valid anymore. They will have to use their passport and their EUSS card. EUSS card is the EU um, settlement scheme card to go and register. They cannot just use their national ID. Um, and EU nationals who arrive in the UK after the 1st of July to get married here must enter with a marriage visa. So if anybody from the EU is coming here specifically to get married, they must apply for a marriage visitor's visa to travel to the UK for that purpose. Irish citizens, and those with EUSS status will remain exempt. If you already have leave to remain here through the EU settlement scheme, you don't need to do that because you already have permission to live here. So this applies to those who do not have permission to live here, but wants to come here to get married. They need to apply for visa prior to traveling to the UK. And all these changes will commence on the 1st of July, 2021 and uh, more information on that is on gov.uk website so uh, that's it for now those giving notice to marry or form civil partnership uh, before the 1st of July which is now will continue to do so under the current system so these changes start from the 1st of July 2021 so we are still within the old system now, the current system, yeah. So that's it for me. Fantastic, um, thank you, Mercy. Um, do we have any questions? I can yes. see some and... Yes, we do. Raised. Somebody's hand is raised. Um, I will ask if we can keep the questions <clears throat> minimal. So I know there might be a lot people want to find out, but you've got to bear in mind there are plenty of people on Facebook and on the Zoom. So one question at a time, please, and possibly type the other questions um, in the chat and we can pick them up as we go, all right? So I'm going to ask um, Oli to unmute yourself and ask your question, please. There you go, Oli. Hi, 
Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I have three questions, and these were questions I threw out. I, I put your poster on a particular group here in Scotland. Okay. And so I, I was told, I was asked to ask these three questions, if you don't mind. Okay. And I've shared the I've shared the link so the people mm -hmm. that needs the question. Well, the first one is um, this is related to international students, and it's more around. So, so I'm trying to rephrase the question. So the person was asking the international students when they come into the UK, they are having to they are having to sign in their international department, and apparently. That is quite difficult because even though they're signing, schools, this school does not engage with them with regards to their immigration status if they want to settle back in the U, if they want to settle down in the UK. So it, from what they were saying, it appears the immigration system attracts them to come as international students, but do not support them to apply for jobs or um, and do not support them to apply for job or explore uh, different routes of settlement with them. So that's the first one. The second one, again, is from a student community. And these were a couple of, well, few women who would ask that they had experienced domestic abuse. And when they went to seek for help, they were told because their spouses to students, and obviously they do not have recourse to public funds, they could not access help. And obviously they were advised to go back to their country, even though they had a right to remain. Oh, well, they had the right to be, well, I don't know, like they're under their spouse's visa. I don't know what it's called, but you know, I mean, you guys would understand. Then the third one is to do with this, is to do with the visa fees. Now, this came, this was quite a popular one and people were, well, those within the community had said, the visa fee is so much and it's putting a lot of pressure on them and they are having to prioritize their finances over their families, their children, and they're having to work extra because they're paying so much compared to the EU citizens. So those are the questions. I don't know if I've made sense, but that was how I was asked, yeah. Okay. Yes, Oli, you have made good, you've made very good. I will, the last one, ask uh, to address the abuse question. Um, maybe we can take the opportunities. Thing. Now, in visa fees, uh, I know it's, you know, uh, you've got the first time, and I said it before for so that it's by the government we cannot we do not have any um, powers over that but what we can do is as many times as people bring it up we will pass on but what i will say is people are aware of the costs before signing on you know very what the costs of your it will be before applying for visa and then coming to the United States. cannot now say here, or all of a sudden it is expensive. What I usually advise people, and I think this is one thing we, we probably need to do a session on that, is before you come and leave in, before you apply to come and study in the UK, you need to get a good understanding of the cost of living, starting from your rent to your um, bills, which include your electricity, your water, your council tax, your, your feed, your transport. I think we need to have a whole session on that to just educate people that, okay, for example, I live in a place called Essex. If I go to London on a daily basis, it costs £20 to go into Central. That is what it costs me. And I know that it is going to, and this is, this is return. This does not, it is, is even when I try not, um, when I pick time, peak period, because when you travel peak period, peak period is 4.930. 
And then after the all the way, I think it's so peak period is ends at 9.30, right? So if you're traveling at that time, it is 20 pounds. And this is when I don't even go on the underground. When you go on the underground to zone one and two, it is more expensive. I think we need to educate people. So you need to sit down and analyze if you can actually, it is one pump, it is another thing for you to sustain yourself. So I think if we equip people with this detailed information, I think it will help people to decide um, on if they're ready or they need to defer or look at their finances and if they come and work, will they be able to juggle, work and study together? These are things that you as an individual, you have to do that yourself. Not You cannot expect the government to do that for you because you are the one who will be studying. You are the one who will be working. So I think that addresses the question of the fees. But like I said, as many times as we are asked, we will continue to feedback to the authorities that make the decision on costs. But we cannot make that decision, unfortunately. Um, so, um, Janet, Don, if you want to take the domestic um, abuse part, I think what I understood is that somebody has joined their, their spouse um, they're ex- going through domestic violence and they've sought for help, been told to go back to their country. Oli, is that the question? Did I get that right? Oli, you there? Oli? Yeah, you know, what it is, is few of these ladies, apparently they were experiencing domestic abuse. So they have yes. organizations who claim that they work with people without recourse to public funds. But it turned out when they disclosed their status that they were spouses to students, to international students, they were told they could not help them. And the only alternative mm-hmm. was either they seek asylum or they go back to their country. Yeah. Okay. okay, Janet, Don. Uh, let me unmute them, hold on. So Jan, unmute. Don, I think Janet unmute. is unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Don. Okay, so just just to reiterate on that one. So I think the first question was as well about how, why are we not helping people to find work and become a student? So when people apply for a student visa, they are only allowed to work up to a maximum of 20 hours per week in term time. And that's literally to, to basically give them some pocket money and maybe get some experience as well whilst they're in the UK. It's not su- to, supposed to be to supplement their income. When they apply for a visa, they have to show evidence and they, that they can support themselves during the duration of their course. That's obviously for the college fees, accommodation, food, etc. Um, and they also obviously have to pay the surcharge fee with regard to the NHS. So I think the, the, the student fee is £348 and the surcharge fee is £470. There's an additional fee of £475 to extend uh, the student course. That's all on the gov.uk website. Now, with regard to the lady with domestic violence, I'm actually uh, working with a lady at the moment with the local authorities from the safeguarding point of view. So just to give you a little bit of a background, um, the lady came to the UK on a visit visa, herself and her child. Uh, They went to visit her partner who's here on a tier four student visa in the UK. Now, unfortunately, whilst they're in the UK, um, there's been a lot of domestic violence. And and when I say a lot of domestic violence, it's quite severe, really. Um, The the violence that's been inflicted on the lady by the the said partner. Now, I'm part of multi-agency strategy meetings at the moment with this lady. um, And while she's in the UK, whether or not she's illegally or whether or not she's in the UK legally, she's still entitled to protection from the UK government with regard to any crime. So she's a victim of crime. She's a victim of domestic violence. And obviously the police will be investigating the perpetrator. And ho- hopefully, you know, and I say hopefully because, you know, that that's not my remit, but hopefully there's enough evidence there for them to go down the criminal route with regard to prosecutions for the, for the violence that he subjected on his partner. So that's him. 
Now, with regard to her, obviously, she's being safeguarded at the moment by the local authority. She's not in the care of the local authority, but they are making sure that her and her young child are protected from any more violence by the perpetrator. So she's now living in another part of the UK. She's actually staying um, with family at the moment. She was only entitled to be in the UK for six months, her and her child, because they came on a visit visa. That visit visa is due to expire imminently, and we are working with the local authority to make sure um, that while she's here in the UK, that we can support her, um, because obviously that's our job to support everybody, but also as well, because she's only here for six months, to, to see whether or not we can assist her and if there's anything that we can do to provide her with some support once she goes home in the UK, because she's she's not here as a student, she's not here on any other route, and she has to go home. It was always her intention when she came on a visit visa to return back to her to her home country. She was only literally visiting. So we, as a, as a, an organisation, will support her in in uh, while she's in the UK. But also, if she's got any difficulties in going back, then obviously we'll support her in assistance to return home. But signpost as well to any organisations in a country of origin that may be able to support her when she goes back. Because at the minute, staying here isn't an option because she's here on, on, on a visit visa. The actual violence has actually been perpetrated in the UK. So, so the benefit of her staying in the UK isn't really... Um, that high because obviously we need to get her away from the perpetrator so we need to try and support her and manage her her expectations and her support while she's here from a safeguarding point of view and I think for her when we're speaking to her it's, it's actually explaining to her I don't think she she likes the police and, and the local authorities being involved but whether or not you're here legally illegally British national or foreign national you have to abide by the law and safeguarding is paramount in every organisation so I think from that point of view, I think that's how we, we will work with people to try and get the best outcome for that individual, but also the best outcome for the whole process, because as I said, safeguarding is paramount. Does, does that answer your question? To be honest, I'd like to put that question for... Go ahead, Ollie. Sorry? I said I'm not the one who's got the question. I'm only asking on behalf of someone. So I don't know if he's answered okay. or not. Okay. That's yes, that was what I was alluding to that you were asking that question on behalf of somebody else. Um, okay, thank you for that. Um, Janet, do you have anything to add to that? Can everybody hear me? Yes. The, the one thing yes. I would say is um, uh, I've... <laughs> The the, um, the story is that the, these ladies asked for help and they were told that they had no recourse to public funds, which probably is the case. But whoever said that needs to have a look at the situation because actually saying that isn't helpful to those ladies because they're actually saying it's all right to be a victim of domestic violence and go back home to, to the, the place where it's taking place, which every everybody on this call will understand that that's not that's not right it's not morally right and it can't be that's not safeguarding somebody so to say just go back home or go back to the 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 marital home or go back to um i'm assuming it's nigeria but it could be anywhere is not not really it's a bit of a cop out whoever said that so i think what they need to I think the ladies need to come forward and ask for help officially because we, unless we know what these circumstances are, then obviously uh, we can't really um, give you a proper answer. But if somebody is destitute in the UK, then they can apply to the local authority for help. Nobody should be destitute, regardless of their nationality and their status, especially if they're a victim of crime. So I would suggest those ladies actually come forward officially, um, either go to the police or come or contact um, the embassy and um, we will see what we can do. Thank you very much, Janet. I was going to if the ladies speak to us, if you can uh, um, to speak to us, so I will be more than happy to provide uh, whatever. Um, the
Thank you. And then um, I think, um, sorry. So you dragged a little bit. Was and somebody I, going to yeah, say something? You dragged a little bit and I know what you said was very vital. So can you just re quickly repeat what you just said now? Uh, we lost you. Okay. Can you see? Um, I, uh, can you see? Okay, let me. <laughs> Maybe if you can your camera and see if that will help. Okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. Right. Drags. Is that better? You're frozen now. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay, but speak, but at least your voice is stronger. Okay. okay. What I'm doing now is I'm speaking from another device. Brilliant. Can you hear me? Very clear, loud and clear. Can you hear me? Very well. We can hear you. Okay, good. So what I said, Okay, if Oli can please convince these ladies to come and speak to us, hmm. assuring them that it is safe for them to speak to us, we will really, really appreciate that. Because just like Janet said and Don said, there is no way we can provide the help or the support they need if they don't come and speak to us. So please, um, Oli, um, I know you're more than capable to convince them to come and speak to us. So please come and speak to us. And so before I go on, massive apologies. I did not introduce, I did not give them part the opportunity to introduce herself, but Del. So Pat, do you want to introduce yourself? It's okay, please. actually. Apologies, <laughs> massive I've apologies. Muted. I've unmuted you, Pat, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Pat Dale. I work with South London Immigration Compliance Team. And um, similar to Mercy and Dawn, and I think uh, similar work, but I work with community and it's as a community liaison officer. And, um, and my job is to actually come out, speak to you, take your concerns back and um, explain what's going on and what's the right thing to do. Um, offer you any assistance or help if you wish to return home or wish to remain in the UK the correct way. Um, take on your concerns and basically explain what ho home office is doing and um, how good they are and they can help you in difficult times and in good times. So that's what I do. I'm a very good listener. That's what I am. Um, is that okay? That's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, could you stop Thank sharing you. the Thank screen, you, actually? I think the... Yeah, no, go on. You can stop sharing your screen if it's interfering. What I was going to say is regarding the, the first part of the question regarding opportunities. And I think, Dawn, you covered that, didn't you? Um, that's another thing. Um, please, when you are students, when you come to the UK, um, it is important that you actually go search. What we can do, do is have a session for our students to point them in the right direction. But as students, I would expect that you will take that responsibility on yourselves to conduct proper research into what you're able to do and what you're not able to do. And I remember that Don did mention your hours to work. Please, please, please. We've had situation where someone was on, I think the final year or penultimate year, and they decided to do more than the hours they were legally allowed to do. And guess what? They had to abandon and they had to leave the country. Sad as that is, you can, yes because they got cut out, they got cut out. Instead of 20 hours doing like, um, how many hours, like 35 hours, and the excuse was, oh, they thought they could do McDonald's, they could do 20 hours in KFC, things like that. No, it is 20 hours in total, because as a student, if you're done 20 hours, what time would you have to study? 
And just to re-emphasize, when you're coming to the UK, the basis on which you're granted a visa is that you can actually support yourself, not that you get to the UK and then you start looking for means to support yourself. Please, we need to, uh, you know, I've said it before, I think it is important that we have a session mainly for international students so that when they come, it is not different, for, you know, they have a very good understanding of what is expected of them and what they're able to do. Um, I think you have somebody, somebody's hand. Um, yes, there are any, any questions before we move on? Because I also want to touch on EU settlement. Okay. Okay, we'll take Kemi your question before we touch on that. Kemi, I'm asking you to. Oh, uh, yes, I'm just, uh, well, I'm not going to mention the name of one of you, but no. uh, I was speaking to uh, one of the people we sh we're supporting, and apparently she's been in the country for almost 10 years now. Uh, she came in because she was uh, having issues with her husband and her daughter. And so, she got getting in the country, she claimed asylum. However, during the course of her application, even before the hearing, the lawyer she was speaking to did advise her that they don't longer give Nigerians uh, as a, what have you, I don't know the technical word you, you use, uh, stay to leave. So, and she was uh, advised to abscond. Uh, the sad thing though is we, uh, she got COVID and she was critically ill and had to go to the hospital. And uh, because uh, she was just living in one, one room accommodation, uh, the owner of the accommodation decided that she, they weren't gonna have her back because uh, she's not a threat to the rest of the people living there. And it was in that period that we got spoken and we advised her to go to the home office. She went to Shenfield and suddenly she was turned back. And uh, they said to her that because uh, she didn't see the asylum through and what have you, that there's nothing they can do to help her. And this lady had to sleep at the bus stop for two days because every contact person they gave to her to contact, I guess because of COVID as well, a lot of organizations are overwhelmed. And um, yeah, it was really a sad one. The question now is, from this lady's perspective and her situation, how can she move forward? Because she needs to do something and uh, yeah, what would you suggest? Thank you. Hmm. I'm not sure, can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Uh, you know what, I think... Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so what she really needs to do is she needs to contact, me? she needs to contact Migrant Help um, and Migrant Health will be able to sign poster um, back to the Home Office and try and get something um, sorted if there's if there's reasons to do it. Now, when you said she didn't follow through with her asylum application, there's, there's different reasons why people don't um, comply with asylum applications. So it could be uh, they've they've left their accommodation, they've moved somewhere else and not to the Home Office and not and not been in touch with the Home Office or their legal rep. So we, we can't assist her unless she actually comes back into the fold, if, if that makes sense. So the first thing that she would need to do is contract migrant help. Now, if there's a justification and reason as to why she hasn't complied with asylum application, it could be the fact that you just mentioned then about COVID. There may be grounds for that asylum application to get reopened and the process to re, re, get restarted. But migrant health will be the first port of call. Um, if she is destitute in, in, in the short term and, and she hasn't got any accommodation um, then she can contact the local authority as well because they might be able to assist her as being a vulnerable person um, and again that would be where I'd be signposting her to, to try and get some form of accommodation. You'll also find that a lot of the, the what we class the homeless hostels will actually support people in accommodation whilst they then get back in touch with the home office and get back into the system. Right. Um, thanks for that, John. Now, in addition to that, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. we can. Go okay. ahead, let me see. Go ahead. Just going to say, in addition to that, I think that is, I think that is one question that we would want to take 
offline as well to get as many, as much information as possible. So um, if that question was from who? Was from Yemi? I'm um, sorry, um, Kemi. Yes. So Kemi, um, if we can speak outside this is, then it may be that in addition to what Donna said, we may be able to take that forward from our, um, as part of um, what we've um, done, achieved uh, um, on, this, on this event. So clearly you have, uh, you have my number for to reach out to yeah, me. I will speak to you and, after. And then have um, a discussion outside event. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, so question before I go to EU SS presentation. Yes, there are a couple of questions. No? Yeah, Miss. Go ahead. No, no, there are a couple of questions um, that have been sent through Facebook. If we're able to take them before you go ahead. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, Please so go ahead. it says, I'll just, um, yeah, go ahead. In a situation that a visa is applied for, A, it stated on her letter that she will be here in March, but her visa will expire in August. Due to unforeseen circumstances, she has to stay till June. But I need to submit another application for B, who will visit in July. And I will have to submit the visa application when A is still in the UK. But A would have left before B arrives. Could you please advise if this is not against home office rule? Now, I am as confused as you guys, because honestly, <laughs> this just sounds like a scripting <laughs> factor. So I'm just reading what has been posted. So we'll hang that one and I'll probably have to type it. You might have to read that. Um, let me give you another one. Some of these are obvious, but we, we do promise our, read, our viewers that we will read their questions. If one wants to get married to somebody who is in the United Kingdom, but has overstayed on their visa, is it possible? What are the options? And lastly... Um, Mercy, over to you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let me unmute Mercy because I know she's going to be able to answer this. Joshua, shut the door. Okay, go ahead, Mercy. Uh, yeah, it is possible. I mean, we can't legally stop anybody from getting married, you know, right. um, it's because they, are, they have overstayed their visa. It is possible. And there is a 70-day investigation. You know, they will go through an investigative process. And uh, just like anybody else who does not have permission permanently to to to, mm -hmm. to live in the UK, they go through a 70 day investigation. And at the end, you are given permission to get married. However, as with all marriages, it does not guarantee that you will gain immigration advantage through that marriage. They are getting married for love. Yeah, that's how we see it. So it doesn't necessarily mean that at the end of the process, uh, and the person applies for leave to remain because of that marriage, they will gain immigration advantage. It's not guaranteed. But yes, they are allowed to get married. There's a process to go through. They will go through the process. They will probably get the chance to get married. Uh, but there's no guarantee that um, uh, they will get uh, immigration advantage through that marriage. Okay. So yes, they are. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. And then if you do not pass life in the United Kingdom test, are you allowed to repeat it? And how long do you have to wait from the time you failed it to the time you take it again? Am I? Who's, who is able to, I, I don't, I'm not sure, I don't know. Who is able to, um, life in the UK I test? The UK test, yes. So it's, they failed it and they want to know the time frame when they can re redo the test again? I don't think I know, but it would probably be on the gov.uk site. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. It is. I'm just on it at the moment. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, I don't I don't think uh, hmm. Okay, so so the guidance says you must book your life in the UK test online three days in advance and it costs fifty pounds. Um it's all on there. Tells you a thing. I'm just trying to see what happens if you fail it. 
Okay, you don't need to take the test if you're under 18 or over 65, or if you've passed it before. Um, I'm just trying to see what it says about failing the test. So just bear with me. It's not our area expertise, as you can appreciate. Yeah, sure, that's fine. We can possibly um, pull that up and we can put something on our social media pages for, for them for later. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And finally, um, I have a British passport. My Nigerian passport has expired a long time ago and I need to travel sometime in July. The visa is very expensive. I have been told I can travel visa free or that I can get one on arrival in Nigeria. Is this true? What are my options? Okay, for starters, we are not Nigerian home office. There we, we go. Are. Thank you. <laughs> we are the UK home office. Exactly. But as, as a Nigerian community leader, um, there's a lot of information out there that right. um, I think it was last week, Saturday, Minister actually had um, a, a session with the Nigerians in diaspora yes. talking about visa on arrival. But please, please, please go to the Nigerian High Commission, Nigeria High Commission website where that information is there. So if you, if, you're, if you have a Nigerian passport and that has expired, what he said, well, is that you can um, get visa on arrival right now? Please, please, please go to the Nigerian Nigeria High Commission website where you would see that information. We are Home Office staff. We do not have any jurisdiction or any um, information more than you have when it comes to um, traveling to Nigeria on expired passport or not. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And we're going to take one last question from I Admin um, before we hand over to you. Um, um, yeah, let me see. Okay, right. I think I'm going to read this out um, for obvious reasons. So it says, I have been in the UK for 15 years, single with severe health issues. My visa expired. Uh, that's a statement. That's not really a question. Um, we haven't. He hasn't asked or they haven't asked he she i wouldn't know what you haven't actually stated yes you've said that before i have been in for 15 years okay but there's still not a question um attached to this statement and i i wouldn't like to speculate or ask the question please how can um regularize my stay okay the question has finally come so basically been here for 15 years single with severe health issues my visa expired how can I regularize my stay? There we go. Okay, um, thank you for that question. That's, I think, another question that we need more information before right. we can answer. So if that person is, again, if that individual is comfortable speaking to us, either through Saffron or coming to us directly, that is fine. But um, just telling us that you're single, yes, you, you've over, clearly you have overstayed, and you have medical conditions. So please um, let us have a further discussion around that um, and see what uh, we, you know, if we can point in the right direction. It might be, you know, I, I'm not going to speculate now because like I said, we don't have um, full information. You've just given us um, one or two statements and I think it would be unfair to um, point in the right direction with that information. The only thing that is clear is that you have overstayed. Okay. So um, let's take this offline. Um, like I said, please feel if you're comfortable enough, uh, come through uh, Saffron and um, we assure you of um, strict um, confidence in dealing with your query. Okay. The, the other thing as well, yeah, Missy, you can go on the gov.uk website. If you go in, type immigration, it will bring you up all the information that we give you today. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, what applications you can make, whether or not um, that's the right application for you and the appropriate fees. But also as well, um, in certain circumstances, certain um, categories of fee waivers are applied. So, again, all the information is on there that you can research yourself. It's free. You don't need to get a legal rep and pay extortionate legal fees, um, which unfortunately some legal reps may charge, others won't. Um, but it is all there as long as you can read English. Um, it is all there, dead self-explanatory, because I've just been using it then to try and answer that question. 
absolutely you're correct um don so yes that if if the person is able to navigate their way through the gov.uk yes that at least that will give you a bit of info some information so that when you come to talk to us eventually you're coming from a place of knowledge but even if you can't um if you find it a challenge you not having to navigate the information on gov.uk will be more than happy to provide um support okay so oh, um is that um is that that's, okay that's can we you can go ahead other questions or are we no there are no other questions to go, to, go straight that's it. yeah yeah okay right okay okay fantastic okay um this is about um eu settlement scheme we know, uh, well, I'm aware that there are quite a number of Nigerians that are EU national. So um, this information is very, very important. If you are an EU national, please listen, or if you have families and friends that um, are EU nationals, please, 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 you need to share this information with them. Now, it's a presentation, um, I, I was hoping we could get um, somebody from the team, but they've sent me a very detailed presentation, which I will go through, but I'm sure in uh, future events, we will be able to get somebody who will be able to deliver the presentation and get and um, answer questions. Even if you have questions, please ask them. What we will do is take that question back, send it to the team and send it to um, Saffron, who will then share it with you if you have questions. So. Um, if you're an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen, you and your family can apply to the EU Settlement Scheme to continue living in the UK after 30 June 2021. You can also apply if you are the family member of an eligible person of Northern Ireland. If your application is successful, you will get either settled or pre-settled status. The deadline for applying is 30 June 2021. There's somebody who is not, is, I think you need to mute. <laughs> I can hear pots and pans. I've muted them. Sorry about that. Okay, that's fine. So let me repeat that. The deadline for applying Back. is 30 June 2021. Please, it is free. If anybody says to you for you to apply for EU settlement scheme, they're charging you money, please, 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 it is F-E-E-S, free, capital, okay? Who should apply? Except in a few cases, you need to apply if one, you are an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen. Two, you are not an EU, EEA or Swiss citizen, but your family member is, open bracket, or is an eligible person of Northern Ireland. The EEA includes the EU countries and also Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway. This means you need to apply even if one, you were born in the UK, but I'm not a British citizen. You can check if you're a British citizen if you're not sure. Two, you can apply if you have a UK permanent resident document. Three, are a family member of an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen who does not need to apply, including if they're from Ireland. Four, are an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen with a British citizen family member. I can still hear some background noise, Gates. No, they've just okay. been mute. People are, are joining as you speak. Yeah, we've managed to mute them. Okay, good. Okay, right. So uh, um, if you have children, you need to apply for them separately. If you are... A, uh, an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen with a British citizen family member. If you are an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen, and you have a family member who is an eligible person 
of Northern Ireland who may be able to choose which way you apply. Who else can apply? You may be able to apply if you're not an EU, EEA or Swiss citizen, but one, you used to have an EU, EEA or Swiss family member living in the UK but have separated. They've died or the family relationship has broken down. You may be able to apply if you're a family member of a citizen and you lived outside the UK and EEA country together. You may be apply, able to apply if you are a family member of a citizen who also has, has EU, EEA, or Swiss citizenship and who lived in the UK as an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen before getting British citizenship. You can apply if you, are, if you have a family member who is an eligible person of Northern Ireland. You can apply if you are the primary carer of a British, EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen. If you are the child of an EU, EEA, or Swiss citizen who used to live and work in the UK or the, Niger or the child's primary care. Now, who does not need to apply for EUSS? Who does not need to apply? You do not need to apply if you have one indefinite leave to enter the UK, indefinite leave to remain in the UK, British or Irish citizen, including dual citizenship. If you're an EU, EEA or Swiss citizen and you have moved to the UK before it's joined the EU. You only need to apply if you do not have indefinite leave to remain. If you do not have indefinite leave to remain, you will usually have a in your passport or a letter from the Home Office saying this. If you work in the UK but do not live here, that's frontier workers, you do not need to apply to the EU settlement scheme if you are a frontier worker. That is that regarding the EU. Said EUSS as an EU settlement um, scheme. Any, like I said, unfortunately, we won't be able to answer the question, but we can take the question to the EUSS team. Um, general information. Um, now, one of the other things, in fact, um, Pat, Pat, can you unmute Pat, please? I am here. Fantastic. So one of the other things that we talk about is about um, joining the civil service. Now, yes. a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, the policies are not right. This is not right. But you have to come and join the civil service if you want to make that impact, if you want to contribute, if you want to change things. So we always encourage people to join the civil service. So part, um, I know, I, apologies, I didn't give you um, the heads up, but I think it is important that you um, talk about um, joining the civil service and maybe um, future event, you would have your own session where you, you know, deliver your presentation from beginning to the end. But if you just give us a summary of um, joining the civil service, the criteria, what is required and things like that. So over to you, Pat. Can you hear me though? Yes, can you can. all hear me? Okay. <clears throat> yes. <All> right. <laughs> okay. I'll do a, a full presentation on um, on how and why you should be encouraged to join civil service. When we start off by civil service, that means any government department. Home office is part of civil service. Um, and basically, I'll give you explanation as to what qualifications you need and what are the benefits. The main benefits, I would say, is the job security. We talk about flexibility, um, particularly if you have young family and you can work around those hours. You can have good holiday scheme. They offer you good pensions and you can also, um, if you if you want to step in in one department and then 
you've learnt enough, but you want to expand your knowledge, you can go somewhere else, whatever pleases you. Because civil service recruits not only the clerical staff, they re recruit scientists, uh, accountants, um, doctors, any in any advisory um, capacity, they have legal teams. And I think our, obviously the pay ranges can differ. Um, there are various ways of getting into civil service. You can come in as apprentice. Um, you can take um, like some exams and then you can come in. But nowadays, um, I think the criteria is very, um, how do I say, it depends where you want to target your entrance. Thank you. I said, I think, when this lady is... Sorry? Did you say something? Sorry. Uh, I think, um, like I said, we have started encouraging young people. We, we are targeting school children to make them aware of the options. We can teach them the technique. We can tell them about what immigration does, immigration officers do, and how they would in they would make their own policies about um, home office. So I think there is a lot of material with what I use in my presentation, which is approximately 40 minutes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, so I, I think um, if you're interested in that kind of thing, we can add that presentation at some point and, and show you the benefits of being part of civil service. If you have leave to remain here, you're a Commonwealth citizen, you're an EU citizen, um, you are most welcome to join the civil service because it's worthwhile. Um, I think that's what can, I can say for the time being. Is that enough in, the, in this time period or you want me to, to share the presentation now? I can show you a little video so, um, if you wish. We can, I think. Okay, how long is the video? It's about. Um, how long is the video? The video is about a minute and a half. It's not too long. Let me get that out. Um, you will have to send it to. You. I you will have to send it to send. You can send it to Saffron because we can't we can share anything from. Um, I understand. I think uh, maybe okay. something to to do it next time, if that's acceptable. What do you think? Yes, you know what? I think, um, Giz, I think um, the next session for month. next month, yes. um, the, because it ties nicely Brilliant. with the um, awareness for students. So if we focus on yes. that for the next session. Sure. Yes? Okay. Sure. Okay. Any, questions, that, any, any, any questions? Anybody has a question? Yes, Yemisi, I have um, somebody I would like to introduce. Um, right. Yes. Um, ooh. Oh, wow. Please tell me he hasn't disappeared. <laughs> you mentioned him. At, there we go. I'm just going to ask you to unmute yourself, sir. Um, we have somebody who would like to thank the immigration team. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Okay, go ahead. Oh, he hasn't unmuted. Okay. Can you hear, can you, can you speak so I can know if we can hear you, please? Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Yeah, my Hello, name sir. is Solat, my name is Olatunde Opadeji. I just want to use this opportunity to say thanks to everyone, starting from uh, Ungozi Ojiako. I really appreciate you. May God Almighty bless you for your concern during my problem. And also my special thanks to Yemi Sijekinsi and all the entire staff of Saffron and all the entire staff of immigration in home office. I thank all of you. The God Almighty will give all of you peace of mind throughout your life. Because mm -hmm. I have a peace of mind now. And uh, all my head is very improved. I, do, I don't think I have any panic attack anymore. I don't have any, I, my blood pressure is good. So I thank all of you. God Almighty will give you peace of mind in Jesus' name. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, the one yes. in the um, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you 
It yes. is so, you know what? I'm just so us, <laughs> that, that, that singular message, that singular message is so touching. It you is. can see the expression of my colleagues. <laughs> we really, we are grateful. We are happy that we yeah. were able to help you and support you. So thank you, sir. Thank you for thank showing you. your appreciation. We, we, we thank you and we wish you all the best going forward. Amen. Fantastic. Amen. Wow, Saffron. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we never ever get any comments like that um, yes. public, pu publicly, I should say, trying to get the words out. <laughs> we get a lot of negative um, comments by every diverse walk of life. And to actually get somebody who is actually prepared to say that in a public environment like this, it's it's quite, I don't know, it's quite, it's touching and it's quite, yeah. I don't know, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. we never get that. So thank you very much. Exactly. I, I, I just did know that. Thank, thank you. That. Lost for words. <laughs> yes. um, colleagues, you would have to pardon me. I'll have to say this in Yoruba language because I really need to appreciate this man in my local language. So, yeah. I will interpret to you guys later. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Hello? Is he still here? Or is yes, he's still here. He's still here. Hold on. Okay, let me speak. Let me say it's in Yoruba that yeah. you know, um, drives the message home very well. Because Cherry, see, you are on your beating banjade and one in your mean to one in no situation. While a jade last time we pay, there's help out there for them. So, thank you very much. So, colleagues, what I've just said to him is that thank you very much. And that when people like him actually come out and speak out, see people that are in similar situation like him yeah. would seek for help. So thank you. Thank I mean, uh, you know what? He's just made my day. You just, you know, you just, <laughs> honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Right. Brilliant. Um, the other thing, so any other questions? Um, um, any other person wants to say, my colleagues wants to say anything about this? young man that has just um, acknowledged us. And Don, you're right. We never get things like this in the public domain. No. We never get this acknowledged. <laughs> so it's really no. hard for me. Really, really hard for me. Okay. More complaints. Um, we get more complaints. No other... Yes. Yes. Yeah, get more complaints. So if there are no other questions, I want to touch on Windrush. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. I'm going to touch yes. on it briefly, but but I'm going to touch on it briefly. But the but the plan <clears throat> is to actually get somebody from the team, even though I'm, a, I'm one of the volunteers, but is to actually get somebody from the team to attend one of our sessions to deliver a well detailed um, session, and they can answer the questions. Now, when the Windrush scandal broke, um, the focus was on um, the um, people from the Caribbean. Subsequently, um, we have realized that other people from other countries, especially Commonwealth countries, actually fall into that category as well. We have been trying, we have been, I mean, I for one, have been um, talking about it a community event that uh, Nigerians, especially those who maybe had their parents in the 60s and had to go home for one reason or the other, what we're saying is ask. Because you may be entitled. If your parents are dead, who would have been entitled to? You may be entitled to compensation. So, we do not want anybody to lose out. It is there. Yes, at the beginning, there were, um, we, we had a lot of challenges in terms of how quickly we were responding to people, but the government is really, really committed to righting the wrongs of Windrush. And the only way that um, we can achieve this is if you actually engage by actually reaching out to us and saying, you can even say, you know what, 
this um, is the information I have. I am not too sure. I just want to find out. Even that is fine. Now, the Windrush team also has um, events that they have on Skype. On Is it on Skype or on Zoom? Um, the dates, they usually have it. Um, if you go to gov.uk and type in Windrush, you would see dates there where they have um, community events where all they talk about is educating and raising awareness about Windrush and Windrush compensation. So please feel free to um, log in. I will send them the link to Saffron so they can share that on their website. So please, please, please do not think because you're a Nigerian, a Ghanaian, you know, anybody from the Commonwealth that oh, Windrush is only about our brothers and sisters from the Caribbean. No, we are actually part of Windrush as well. I just you know, um, feel that people need to, we need to, we need to really talk more about it so that um, people do not um, miss out on that. Um, also, any, any question? No? Yes? Can I go on? Yes, go ahead. Okay, right. Now, um, I should have added this when I was, um, when we're responding to questions about students. Now, good news, good news, good news. And I think I sent this um, video, this short clip from the British High Commission, High Commissioner to Nigeria. She made that video, I think it was um, late last year. The, the summary of her message is, amendment to students studying in the UK. You will now be able to work or look for work in the UK at any skill level up to two years or three years if you have a PhD. What that simply means is from 2021, if you come and study in the UK, after your study, you're given, if it's first degree, you're given two years to work in the UK. So this addresses the question of opportunities, when somebody said, oh, when they come and study, there aren't opportunities for them. This is the opportunity. So after your study, you're given two years to work. You're allowed to work in the UK for two years. If you're a PhD student, it's three years. Um, I know I have that video somewhere, um, but I can't remember where it is. It would be nice for you to actually hear that yourselves. Uh, if anybody on online, my colleagues, if anybody has it, if you just quickly ping it to me and I'll send it to Saffron if they can share it. Whilst we're looking for that, um, I hear a lot about, oh, you know, um, people talking about things and not complaining. Um, I can assure you and guarantee you that the fact that you complain about our service will not, should not, cannot be used against you. That is not how we work. If for any reason you feel that because you have made a complaint about um, the way you were treated and that has sort of had a negative impact on the decision, you have every right to complain. Right. Um, the um, when you engage with us, or when you come into contact with us, if you want to complain, you have every right. Be it at the borders coming in, every right to say, "Can I have the complaint booklet?" You have every right to ask for that and lodge in your complaints. When people tell me things over and over, and I'm like. If you don't complain officially, there is no way it can be dealt with. And the next um, response I hear is, oh, yeah, Missy, I don't want anybody, I don't want them to put a mark on my passport. And I just bust out laughing. Who's going to put a mark on your passport? That, oh, if they complain, maybe the officers will do um, something on their passport the next time they're coming in. And I said, no, no one will do that. And if anybody is tempted to do that, you can complain. And that is not, you know, that is really, really taken seriously by the department because that is, um, that means your, your um, what's the word I'm looking for now? Um, you, you, using your powers, abusing the powers you have 
as home office staff, you are not allowed to use that against anyone. Now, um, somebody asked a question earlier about, um, you know, no, not, not asked the question, but mentioned the fact that somebody got a bad advice from lawyers or solicitors. I cannot stress it enough until we begin to report them to law society, until you know what your rights are. You're paying for this service. It is not free. So you have every right to demand for what you pay for. If a, if some, if a lawyer takes up your case, and you feel that they are not giving you the service you deserve, please tell them that you will report them to the law society. If the person is an immigration advisor, there is, um, and they are, there's an office called Office of Immigration Service Commissioner, OISC. The telephone number is 0345 000. 0046. I'll repeat that. The telephone number to report immigration advices is 0345 000 0046. To complain about how your solicitor lawyer handled your case, Law Society, Regulation Authority, SRA, Code of Conduct. And then you have, so if you Google Law Society, it will come up. And you have the Ombudsman as well. The Ombudsman 0300 555 0333. 0300 555 And they have an email address. Enquiries at legalombudsman.org.uk right enquiries at legalombudsman.org.uk to report immigration enforcement to a border force officer all officers and i say this to people all officers in the front line they have a unique number on what we call epaulets on that epaulet all you need is their unique number. My own unique number is 220355. Sorry, yes. Everybody, if you're in uniform, must have your epaulets on because that is the only way they can identify you. If you ask for your name, they will not give you your name because you're not we're not allowed to give you our names. But our number is unique to the individual. So once you have that number, you can then ask to speak first. It may be an issue that can be resolved there and then. You may ask to speak to a senior officer to complain to there and then. Um, if you are still not happy, um, ask for a complaint form, like I said earlier. Um, and you can find that at www.gov.uk forward slash government forward slash organization forward slash i'll send this to saffron i know it's a long one i'll send it to you but of course about complaints procedure same thing for immigration enforcement crime relating to modern slavery human trafficking domestic servitude domestic um, slavery yes we're more than happy to take that but if you want to make um, um a call or report because we see things things happen around us and we just we sometimes people will say you know what, I don't want to get into the trouble of police. And I know why, because unfortunately, um, our countries, as in home country, when you report cases to police, you may end up being the one who will then be arrested for that, <laughs> for, for that <laughs> crime. So I know why people are a bit apprehensive in engaging and reporting. But there are three numbers that you can call. There's one for Crime Stoppers. It's 0800 triple five. Triple three. Crime Stoppers, 0800 triple five triple one. Sorry, I said triple three. My, my, my eyes is saying one, but my head is saying three. So, sorry, <clears throat> Crime Stoppers again, 0800 triple five triple one. 
um, modern slavery, if you witness your where or your victim, please call 0800 121 700. 0800 121 700. Please do not say because you do not have immigration status, you cannot call these numbers. Please call these numbers. You will get the support you need and it will be treated with strict um, under strict confidential guidelines. I think that's the right one to say. Um, yes, yeah, so um, I think for me, um, the other one, which um, somebody just mentioned briefly, I think it was Amanda, is voluntary return. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, no, no, who wants to return? We have people who are, act in fact, I think the next um, event we're gonna have, we will bring some starts. People are actually returning to Nigeria and to other countries. Some people have been, have been here, they've done everything within their powers to remain in the country, but unfortunately they have not been able to. Some have been some victims of crime, some have been exploited in ways and manners that you don't even want to hear. So what we're saying is that the, we, Immigration and Enforcement, there's a scheme called voluntary return service, where people are actually supported to return home voluntarily in dignity and respect. Now, the difference between this, because um, um, when, we, when people are removed, which people refer to as deportation, when, you're, when, you, are, when you have overstayed and your removal is enforced, that is not deportation. You're deported if you have committed a crime uh, as a foreign national offender. If you have committed a crime and you've been sent to prison, yes, you'll be deported. But if it's just you have overstayed and um, you we encourage you to go home, you haven't gone home, and then you're arrested and detained, and then you your removal is enforced. Now, if your removal is enforced, I think it's about 10 year ban that you get. But if you engage with us and say, you know what, I've been here, I've overstayed, and I want to go home. Um, only recently, and this comes with, um, th there are people who will qualify, there are people who will not qualify. Um, I will need to get the details of those who qualify and those who do not qualify. One of the people who will not qualify will be someone who probably has engaged with us to want to return home and, all of, and pulls out and then comes in and then all of a sudden that, you know, that you're, you're not really, you know, engaging, are you? Now, there is a financial support for people who want to return home voluntarily, right? You sh couldn't have committed, you, I mean, you, you don't have, you can't have a criminal record, right? So for voluntary return, there is a 3,000 pound and financial support to help people resettle back at home. We will help you through the process. Now, previously, um, the way it was done was such that um, it is when you get back, they will give you some, you know, some, it, you, know, you go through a process and then some, it's a case of, oh, you look for a business and then you submit the proposal and then we look at the business, we help you to pay for this, blah, 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 blah. But now it has been made very, very simple. But like I said, this is another thing that will come up when we speak um, at our next session in terms of, because the only, the, we, um, this was only just um, cleared, I think a week ago or two weeks ago. So the details of those who qualify um, and the process of getting paid, if you have exhausted every means of staying in the UK and you want to return to your country of origin with dignity and, and respect, this is not, not just to do with Nigerians. This is with every person um, who has come to the UK and want to return to their country of origin. That £3,000 is there to support you to help you return back home. We will go through that process. Some people will say, oh, I've lost my passport. Yes, we will work with the high commissions or embassies to help you to get that. It is very, very important. Um, I, I cannot stress it enough. 
Yes, people can turn around and say, oh, yeah, the situation, let's use Nigeria, for example, is not really something that they want to go back to. But trust me, people are going back home. People are going home voluntarily because for them, they have looked at, they have assessed everything around them. And for them, they feel that going back home is the best option for them. Some people have, you know, homes in Nigeria. Some people have families that are willing to support them. Meanwhile, what is happening to them here is that they're just by themselves. Some people have developmental health issues. Some people, you know, they're just alone. They don't have that communal support that, that we usually that we usually have um, in the in the community. So they, for them, they're actually better off going home. And we actually have people who have actually gone home and are doing well despite everything that is happening. I have a case of a young girl who returned. I usually use her. She was a student. Unfortunately, she got bad advice and her um, application was messed up. The girl, young lady, returned back to Nigeria. Guess what? This girl is a motivational speaker now. She's booked the all year round to talk at events. She's married and she has a beautiful daughter now. Life does not begin and end in the UK. Yes, the UK is safe. But if you're unable to stay here legally, I do not even want to imagine what you go through. Some people are sleeping in um, salons. Some people are sleeping on the streets, even when it is cold. Meanwhile, you have a lovely family back home that are willing to support you. So please, if you want to go back home voluntarily, you have exhausted every means of regularizing your papers. Please reach out to us. Reach out to us to um, um, suffer and we will help you to return home. Um, on that note, I don't have um, any other thing to cover, but I don't know if my colleagues, if I've left anything out that my colleagues will want to um, raise. Thank you. Anyone? Any questions? No, I just reiterate what you've just said. Um, we've been working with quite a lot of organisations in the past about the sister voluntary return. So a lot of people will have heard of the International Organisation for Migration, Refugee Action. Uh, they were all organisations that provided that service on behalf of the Home Office. That um, assistance has now been brought back into the Home Office. It is a fantastic um, piece of assistance that we can provide for people in the past, we, we've assisted quite a lot of people. Um, and, what, and when I say people, I'd say families. So families who've been in the UK, um, either in the asylum process or have been here where they've overstayed visas, etc. Um, they've been sort of like in limbo, as we say. So they, they can't really go back home because they can't afford it. Um, but obviously all their life, their roots have been put down in the UK. So with regards to children's education, etc. The assistant voluntary return package can assist us, as Jemisee said, in supporting people and going back and creating their life back again. Because obviously when they've come to the UK, some of them have actually brought all their home, their life back to the UK, and they've got to go back with nothing. So it is, it is a fantastic package. It can be used to assist with medical treatment if somebody's got a medical condition, education for the person or the children. Um, starting up their own business we've had quite a lot of people in the past who have actually started up their own business and if you go on the IOM website um, you'll actually see a lot of these people who've gone back settled themselves up and they've actually then gone on to employ other people as a part of us assisting them to start up their own business it could be for the the sake of setting up their own home so in I think we dealt with a lady I'd like to say from Nigeria, but I'm not 100% certain, um, so forgive me for this. We assisted in going, uh, going back voluntarily with her family quite a few years back. Uh, she ended up buying um, a house, so which, whichever house it was, it wasn't the same house that she had in the UK, it was the equivalent of what she had in her, her home country. And she started her own business from that house, so I think it was like sewing. She went on to do like sewing, sewing garments and things like that. And she then employed a couple of other people. So it is a fantastic piece of kit, which I don't think people actually, and we don't ourselves promote it as much as what we should do because, you know, rightly or wrongly, people like us or they don't like us. And that chat went before with this comment was absolutely fantastic. But it's actually given people a lot of dignity, a lot of respect and a lot of choice. 
as an opposed, you know, that choice being taken away from them and the decision being made. And it is good because at the end of the day, if somebody is here illegally in the UK, all the Home Office has to do is provide a plane ticket to get them back to their country of origin. That's it. We don't have to help them from the assistance uh, with assistance when they land to their country at, at the main airport to the home. So this is actually something that gives them like a whole package. So they, they've got dignity, they've got choice. They, they can work with the Home Office and have a time span in which to, to leave the UK. And they're in control, they go back with money, dignity and maybe a fresh start. So for me, I think it's a fantastic package and, you know, we promote it in all our correspondence that we send out to legal reps and to individuals. But it's lost, unfortunately, in all the wording of the Home Office letters. We don't publicise it as much as what we should. Um, in the past, we had quite a lot of posters, videos, etc. And the, the new promotion um one more word and I'll look at the new promotion leaflets videos etc are still being looked at um, but it's literally word of mouth now and on the gov.uk website so please have a look at it and um, signpost individuals you know because knowledge is power and we're giving you that knowledge now so you've got the power to do something with it can I add something to it actually if that's okay um, yeah go on please go on it is um I, I think um I can I can cite a case where a lady came in as a visitor, a Nigerian lady, and um, she had um, a heart attack and eventually she was paralyzed for some reason. And she had no one in this country. If, and of course, she, she, didn't, she couldn't speak, but eventually we, we got to talk to her with basically gestures or with great difficulty, frankly. And the only thing she wanted to do was return home to be with her family where she could be at peace. Because here she was surrounded by a lot of care packages, for instance, you know, people coming in in our home, um, providing health care, social care. But she didn't know anybody and she eventually wanted to return home. And what we did with her was facilitate with health medics and made sure that she got home um, in a way that her family could take care of her. And again, we used some of the money um, to help her family back home, who actually catered her home um, in a way that she was comfortable and uh, the wheelchairs could move easily. So I think there's a lot of support given by home office. They don't just deal here. The help can go across the boundary and to the to the nation, to the other other part of the world. So I think something to bear that in mind, because people sometimes get stuck in a situation and they don't know what to do. So we are here to actually support you in those circumstances too. Fantastic. Uh, do we have questions? Yeah, let me see, there's a question. Um, I'm sorry to take us back to the student, but it is from the student and it says, um, if, oh gosh, what is it? Will, I mean, if there is a clause as to the eligibility, oh, these questions are not easy. The, if there is a clause as to the eligibility of the post study visa, example, module specific performance during studies. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. No. Okay, somebody, somebody, anybody who makes them take that question? Thank you. I, well, I think, um, are you talking about the course they're going to study? They said, please, is there any restriction to the PSW visa? Example, your academic performance during your study? No. Okay. Yeah. Right. You're a student, you're a student Brilliant. with a student visa. Okay. Okay, the person is on, on here, so I don't... I, I hope that's Any? answered your question. Student visa is a student visa, so, yeah. there's, so there's no other, other thing we would look at. Awesome, okay. Okay, they're, they're fine with that. They probably just... Yeah, okay. Thank you. That answers my question. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any, other, any other question? Okay. 
Um, I, I have something. It's a. I, I think I, I know you've 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 gone over it about the overstayers, but I think from speaking um, to a lot of the community, that that is a massive um, something that comes. It, it's big. It's huge. Um, they're, they're everywhere. And um, I, I think I'm more asking if we can reiterate to them, a specific one came up yesterday. This gentleman um, is, his visa is still, it's still a tourist visa. It's still within the, the time range, but the plan is to overstay this visa. Um, and he's got involved with a woman who obviously has fallen in love, which is fine. They're having a baby. So what I've said, I did ask them to come on. I'm not sure if they're on. And um, so what I said to the person was based on, you know, our past um, programs is go home and do uh, apply for the visa properly because you've been given a tourist visa. Obviously, you will be able to come back. But once you overstay, then you're creating problems. Um, if we could reiterate to the community that the, 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 the idea of I'll overstay my visa and then I'll start battling it out with them. Um, I, I think we need to put that out there because I, I, I think they think Saffron can, we have a magic wand and it, it really isn't like that. Um, yeah, and, uh, I, I just think somehow that, that, that is a big one for us because a lot of the, and then they get involved with the lawyers who then give them the very wrong information. And then it just, you know, it's a domino effect. So um, I don't want to drag us back. But I think we need to put out a very stern, not a warning, but you know, a message to say it's it's not going to happen. I think Mercy should reiterate that because I think I'm going to unmute you. Just bear with me. Um, okay, there you go. I feel like I'm being stitched up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be popular. <laughs> right. Well, um, in your statement, you said the person, it appears the person is looking to overstay. That's right. You see? Well, <laughs> if they are on here listening, my advice would be do not overstay. Whatever you do. Uh, I exactly. think overstaying is a little bit underrated in, the commu in our community. But it's a crime. Whichever way you look at it, okay, you've fallen in love, but it is a crime. If you've got six months to, to come on holiday, you come and fall in love, you go back and prepare and come back properly, right? Um, if I go to America on holiday, I've got a home here. I've got a life here. I've got a job here. I won't just overstay and forget everything I've got here, would I? So I will come back, sort myself out properly, get rid of my accommodation and go back. So... It is always interesting when somebody comes here for six months, having a life back home and decides to forget about everything back home and overstay. Overstaying is an offence. It's an immigration offence and it can actually be a criminal offence. Depends how we look at it. So I would advise anybody listening not to overstay. Overstaying is just as bad as illegal entry. It's an immigration crime. And it can, like uh, you said, it can complicate your situation. But people seem to think, oh, at least I came in with a visa. It doesn't make any difference. It complicates your life. And, you know, whatever application going forward um, becomes very difficult. And then, you know, um, you go and see a solicitor. I mean, solicitors have to pay their bills. I've said this before here. They have to pay their bills. And therefore, they will advise you and tell you, oh, yes, we can do that. We can do this, and then they will string you along, all along. Every time you come and see them, consultation fees, you know, and then it piles up, and you, your situation becomes very difficult and dependent, completely dependent on them. So what I would say with regards to that is whatever you do, do not overstay. Whilst you still have leave, you know what I would do? I would just go back within the time, within my visa time, so that if even... Um, their relationship doesn't survive. I can always come back again, you know, on visits. You don't know down the line what's going to happen with regards to that um, relationship. So um, based on a, what, a three-month relationship, I wouldn't overstay my visa just for that. You know, give yourself time to get to know the person. And um, 
you know, if it's a genuine relationship and they really want you wherever you are in the world, they will try and bring you back. I've seen it happen so many times. And I've also seen people kicked out within, what, six months and the person decided not to go ahead with the application. So I, I would very much advise people do not overstay. Use the correct routes to come back in. If you've had the opportunity to come here on holiday, do not spoil your chances for the future. Go back and, you know, go to the right channels to come back in. Awesome. Th thank you. For, thank you. For can, you me, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Dawn. Yeah, sorry. Just to add on to what Mercy's just said then, I think there's another bigger picture as well, because in order for somebody to come to the UK, somebody has to vouch for that person. They have to sponsor mm -hmm. that. to say, you know, I, I agree with this person. I think they're going to abide by the law, et cetera. So you overstaying that visa will then cause problems for that person who sponsored yeah. you. So it might not only just be you getting into trouble, it could be the person who then sponsors you. And that could be your family member that, you, you know, you, you've said that I'm going to come and stay with you and I'm going to do this. But when we, if we have to go through an investigation, it won't just only be the person whose door we go knocking on. It will be the sponsor's door as well. So there's a bigger picture. So please don't let it go to that far because that's not something that we want to do, but that is something that we will have to do, and that's no benefit to you. So please, please don't. It's it's not worth the hassle. Awesome. And it's also the chances of other people getting the chance to visit as well. The sponsor will not be able to invite anybody else back. Right. And that will be an issue. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. And just before I hand over to you, Yemisi, based on everything that's been said today, because we also know that with um, failed immigration and um, processes, you know, the children become very, very vulnerable, especially where children are involved. It puts children at risk. It puts children in harm's way. Um, so um, what Safran have decided is to liaise, and we're doing it with Nigeria to start with as a flagship, we will be having a call um, to action summit on the 25th of May um, in Abuja. It's an online virtual um, program and it's basically, you know, covering all of this um, and, but in line with, you know, the children and the young people because where you have um, children who are born in this country and end up getting sent back as a result of X, Y, or Z, there are different things that come um, with that process. So yes, we just wanted to let everybody know that on the 25th of May, there will be um, a virtual summit. It's at 10 o'clock in the morning on the 25th. It's probably an hour, hour and a half, um, but I think it would be amazing because the idea is prevention. We as an organization are seeing ways in which we can prevent these kind of um, immigration non-processes if you like um from taking place we want it to be done the right way and i think as an organization we feel that if we educate them before they come in it means that when they're doing the process they're going to do it the right way um so we thought we'd put that out there um and we hope that you know if you can join i know it's 10 o'clock in the morning some will be working but we will send the recorded version as well um, like we've always said, we, we have to bridge the gap and we want to be seen as that bridge, you know, um, that is that is doing that. So thanks a lot for, 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 for that. OK, let me see over to you. We'll share the flyer before the end of the program. Yes, let me see you go ahead. Uh, bye. Are you on mute? Yes, you are. Hold on. Let me unmute you. Sorry, love. OK. OK, go ahead. You've. I've asked you to unmute. Okay, go ahead. I've yeah. asked you to unmute. Yeah, I have. Okay, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good. I think you've got Thank two you. of your devices yeah. on, yeah, Missy. Because <laughs> there's an echo somewhere. Can okay. you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I know why. I took my volume down. So okay. you should be able to hear me now. Yes, we can. We can. Good. So thank you. Um, uh, all I think I think we have covered. I think we have covered um, most of the things that we feel will be useful to yeah. the um, to the community. Sure. Um, I think it's just to ask my colleagues if anybody has anything to say. 
um, or add if we've missed anything or um, do you have people who would want to meet after um, for quick one-to-ones that we will take and then we can then have a break yeah and then we go into that um, session great people okay we we will ask if you would like a one-to-one -one session it's it lasts five minutes tops not more than five minutes or less between three and five minutes because obviously it's possibly a question and you'd want to hear from the, the from the team um, please indicate now in the chat um, once I don't see you in the chat please do not try to join after because I will not be allowing you in so once you indicate in the chat it is the names from the chat that we will take um, just so that there's some order I'm going to ask you to put your names in the chat now if you wish to have a one-to-one -one session um, we will be closing this part of the session um, at 2.30 um, because we aim to finish by three. So if you do wish to have a one-to-one -one session and you have something you would like to discuss outside of the forum, it's confidential. It will be only yourselves, your, your, in you as an individual, unless you have a lawyer present, but it will only be yourself and the home office engagement team present. So there's that, that's the level of confidentiality that we are providing for you today. So please, can you state now, I'll give you five minutes to put your name in the chat if you do want a one-to-one -one, um, and we'll take it from there. Um, okay, so I've got one already. So that's you, Victoria, not a problem. Um, that's fine. Okay, and as you put, okay, so I've got two people already. And Victoria. Beautiful. Okay, so what will happen when we close this session, if you stay on, don't leave the meeting, just stay on and you will be placed in the waiting room and then you will be released um, when it's your turn to come in. Okay, okay, so I'm going to have one last call. If anybody would like a one-to-one -one session with the Home Office team, please put your name um, in the chat now, um, but please do not try to join after now because I definitely will not be allowing you in okay all right let me see over to you whilst that is happening we've got a couple more minutes at the moment we've got just two people that would like a one-to-one -one, so okay right okay so for us um if there are areas that we have not covered that you want information on please feel free to um, get in touch with us via Saffron um, we can signpost you to our colleagues in UKVI in Border Force um, so please just that's all I need to add um, I can't remember I, I think we've covered majority of the things that uh, impact on us but like I said it's this event is actually for you so more than happy for you to highlight or maybe areas that you feel you know what we have not really delved into that you need it will be useful for the community to have to have more information please feel free to let us know and that's it and um, if any of my colleagues if they have anything to add that is more than you know please you're more than welcome Okay, I, I think I can see quite a few people leaving now, which indicates that um, we're going to be left with um, ourselves. So just I think. Before, sorry, yeah, we see, can just take before you. Ten minute... Yeah, we're going to take a 10 minute break, but just to let everybody know the next session, um, the next, because it's every three weeks. And I think from my director has just given me the dates because I'm useless with dates. The next session is the 19th of June, 2021. We'll be back here on the 19th of June, 2021, at 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. So if you can put that in your diaries, um, do your homework, get your questions um, ready for the Home Office team, um, and we will be back here on the 19th of June, 2021. Um, and it would be amazing if we can have as many students as possible, international students, um, so that we can, you know, you guys can also get your one-to-ones in because obviously with the new start of the, the term coming July, September, it would be amazing if we could have as many international students on as possible. And like we said, it's always a confidential um, um, forum um, and, and the home office team are here to 
help your situation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I think we can go for our, our break now. So Wait. how many people have you, do you have? Right now it's three. just two. Okay. Uh, two. Yeah. Right. Okay. Ladies, let's, um, let's have a 10 minutes break and yeah. Um, yeah. we'll be back. We'll, yeah. Have, we'll, sorry. Have two. Yeah. Have two. Don't have three. <laughs> <laughs> I tell have you that to. I'm hungry now. Have so to, have, to, have to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. See us. Excuse. Okay. We will be. Okay, so the two people who indicate that they want a space, please, can you stay? And the rest of you are free to exit the forum. Thank you very much for coming on today. And we will see you um, on the 19th of June. Have a good afternoon, everybody. And don't forget to shut down the um, Facebook page. <laughs> we, we, we're doing that. To we're doing that. We're not, definitely. We're doing that as we speak. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Please, could I admin? And I think it's Victoria. Please stay on. Thank you. And I'll put you in the waiting room. The rest of you are free to exit the, the page. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 